Welcome back to the next iteration of Enemy AI and set up really really quickly those two enemies in Game Maker Studio and they are extremely similar so they are Therefore, I'm gonna package them together. So the first one is the wave flyer, which is flying in a wave form, which is extremely easy to pull off. And then we're gonna do the rammer, which is the bottom Reno enemy. And for example, it's just trying to ram you when you are kind of in line. So therefore, if you want to know how to do that really, really quickly in Game Maker Studio, stick around. This is One Up Indie. I am a developer, so if you like what you're seeing, hey, why not consider sharing, liking, and subscribing? So once again, a really quick setup. So let's do first of all uh, only the uh, the wave flyer here, and um, it will kind of fly. And once again, it's hitting here a wall, which is well, Justin flagged solid wall so if you haven't watched the previous video for that one link in the description below because this is basically the same in this regard so what we're gonna do we just take this dude of course give it a nice little sprite which is centered in the middle but it's not necessarily how you how you can do this but you can and then for example if we are hitting uh, well a wall which is flagged as solid we do one thing move bounce solid and then for example it will bounce off those walls and then for example what we do we just give it let's say a speed of 1.5 and then for example once we check it out at that would for example and now what you see is that thing is flying left and right and this is basically just ping ponging left and right which is kind of nice but of course this is looking <laughs> a bit like moonwalking therefore we're gonna remedy that quickly because what's actually happening once we are bouncing off we are changing our direction so we can actually say like, hey, our image angle, so our basically the rotation of the image attached to it is basically the direction. And then for example, once we check that out, and as you can see now it's working correctly. So nothing basically has changed. We are just changing the rotation. So let's come to the more interesting part. How can we actually do uh, a Xenos wave form? Basically how we can, uh, well, do this kind of Xenos or Cosinos or Tangens or whatever you want to call that. Basically, it's all the same stuff. It's just a waveform. How can we do this? Well, first of all, we need a variable which is uh, take, taking our start position at the very start. So here, uh, let's call it start Y. And then in our step event, we just say like, hey, our Y position is our start position plus. And here we go into a pretty easy stuff. So Sin, which is standing for Xenos tangents or whatever and then of course you need to input an angle here we can input actually our current uh, what is it time there we go divided by i don't know depending how you want to do this for example i just thought like hey 500 looks good and this thing will return a value between uh, zero uh, minus one and one and therefore we are already having a Xenos wave but of course maybe this is too big or too small for you therefore we multiply it with a variable which are called wave height so for example we don't want to go between uh, just minus one and one so therefore we define it other let's go by 15 and then multiply it and then our uh, wave dude th thing is basically finished so here we go as you can see boom working pretty sweet and it's going upwards and it's rotating so easy peasy stuff basically what we're gonna do is the same for our well our reno dude which is basically having once again a collision also it is bouncing off but here we're gonna do a little bit of a change because here what we did uh, on this specific instance is is doing this we did a rotation but our reno guy which we just place into the room there we go let's go at the bottom it has not this luxury because it is actually centered at the bottom center so therefore we're going to do a little bit of a different thing for example he could actually fly this is basically the same enemy but give it speed value of I don't know 
at the very start and then it's bouncing off. So basically we cannot do uh, the image angle the same as the direction. So here, for example, once we are bouncing off, what we can actually do is just uh, change our image X scale. So um, our image X scale is basically multiply multiple times times uh, minus one. So every time it's minus one, it goes one. And then if it's one, it goes minus one each time we are bouncing off uh, that thing. So basically this is then applying therefore uh, that it's centered at the bottom center as a starting point. So just to see this is the point and therefore rotation works a little bit different. Therefore we cannot do the same stuff as here. But once again, this is of course nothing has changed. Basically we would be having an enemy which goes left and right, which is kind of boring. So let's uh, have two variables which are then called normal speed and fast speed. And then for example, at the, as a default, we have a normal speed set up. And then for example, we are actually checking for a collision with our player in our step event. And we just say like var collision or whatever you want to call that thing. And then collision, and then we have got tons of things and we just go with a line. And then X, let's go with minus 250, Y, then X plus 250, and Y once again. Um, not the best way because uh, <laughs> maybe you have already guessed it. Uh, this would draw a line at the point at the bottom and basically we could actually bypass the player, which is not good. So therefore we're gonna, I don't know, go with minus 15 and uh, Y minus 15 also. And then for example, we need an object to collide with. So this is our object player, then zero, zero. And that thing will return, well, Collision, for example, the collision can say like, hey, is it returning something? If it's not, it's returning no one. So if collision is unequal to no one, so this could be one of the things. So for example, it can return no one if, well, nothing is being collided with. So basically the line of our uh, dude here is not colliding with anything. Boom, plus. And then, then it's returning no one. But for example, if it's uh, colliding with the player, then it will return the ID of the player. And therefore, then uh, this thing is then, okay, okay, we have a collision. So basically, let's do something. So we can just say like, okay, sweet. Then uh, if we're colliding with the player, our speed is the fast speed. So four times. And then for example, or we can do, of course, the negative thing and like else, hey, we returned no one, so there is no collision, then our speed is, well, the normal speed. And this is basically the whole thing. Just to uh, visualize that, I just do the same stuff. So draw a line um, above our Reno dude, and then let's check this out. Alrighty, so what you're seeing right now, for example, here's all the time a collision. And then, for example, if I'm jumping off, this collision line, which you're seeing as the the white line here, then uh, wow. <laughs> then he's going slower. And therefore, um, of course, I put in a little bit more detail to that in my preview. So there is a delay time and so on. But I thought like, hey, let's make this as easy as possible as a walkable enemy. As you can see now, he is slower. And then once we are touching, whew, whoop. And basically, as you can see, this uh, mechanics are pretty easy and fast to implement in Game Maker Studio, and you already got two very typical enemies uh, being used. So hopefully that was of interest to you guys. Of course, uh, link in the description below to the previous video plus the code of those uh, two dudes here if you need it. Have a good one. One up indie.